Hi, I'm Luca. I'm a 2023 Frog Force alumni. I'm now at Grand Valley State University studying mechanical engineering. And this year, I am leading the Frog Force functional deployment for the Robot in One Week FTC Challenge. So this is something we go through as Frog Force at the beginning of the FRC season to kind of come up with ideas for our robot um, and basically um, quantify which tasks are the most important and which ones we should be focusing on. So we're going to do something similar for this FTC just to know what we should be focusing on. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole presentation because it's not completely applicable, but basically it's a stressful time. We kind of need to objectively say what we're going to be doing and what not. So we cover scoring, autonomous, teleop. Um, we don't really do human player endgame. It's kind of simplified for FTC and we don't really do historical either. So this is the main structure that we're going to be following. If you guys have ever done like a Mad Lib where you kind of like get blanks and you fill in a random verb or a noun or whatever, we kind of do something similar to that. So we set up a sentence structure that's a uh, robot must be able to do verb or robot must be able to verb the noun one into, over, under the noun two. So if you guys remember the FTC game from last year, this is the Auton functions that we came up with. So the robot needs to drive itself across the field, hold pixels inside the robot, and then you can add a specification. So for that, we said it must be able to hold two, um, must detect the randomized piece on the field, and stuff like that. So we did that for Auton, Teleop, and Endgame. And then at the end, we kind of combined all of it into one big list. And basically, with that, we can determine which tasks are the most important across the three different pieces of the game. So because not all of the pieces are weighted equally, like, for example, in Teleop, you, there's usually a lot more scoring potential than there is in Auton and Endgame, for example. Uh, we weight the functions based on how many points you can score during that phase of the game. So there's this other scoring sheet. This is my, my realistic estimate. So this is based off of those cycle times that I calculated. Um, so in Auton, you can get six points for moving into the parking zones. And theoretically, I think you'll be able to score two of the um, specimens on the high uh, rung and five in the high basket. Um, that's kind of a stretch goal, but again, we're aiming for like the max possible realistic points. So I think there will be teams during auto that are scoring. This is for two robots, by the way. So um, I believe that's what the max auto will be. Um, in Teleop, um, oh, I should explain this first. So you might be wondering why I have basket more than high specimens here. So if we come over here, these are the cycle types for Teleop. So as you can see here, this is the specimen cycle. So first you drive to the submersible, which takes two seconds. Intake the sample with, you have to intake the correct color. So that might take longer. So that I estimated three seconds for that. Then you drive to the observation zone, which is another two seconds. Then you have to drop off your sample and pick up another one that already has a clip on it, which is another two seconds. Then you drive to the specimen chamber, which is another two seconds. And then you score the specimen, which one and a half seconds. Again, these are just guesstimates. Um, yeah. So a cycle time would be 12 and a half seconds which means you can do 8.4 cycles per match. And your total score for one robot would be 84 points. For two robots doing that, it would be 168. So that's for the specimens. Now, if you go down here, these are the basket cycles, which are the high basket. So as you can see here, the list is a lot shorter because you don't need to interact with the human player. And because of that, the cycle time goes down from 12 and a half to 8 seconds, which means you can now do 13 cycles by yourself compared to the 8.4. And as you can see, the total score is actually higher if you're only doing basket cycles based off of my theoretical timings. Um, in reality, you'll probably encounter defense, which is kind of what I guess down here. So realistically, it'll probably more be like eight basket cycles and five specimen cycles. But yeah, so I use these guys to then generate this, which I think will be Theoretically, the max attainable score, but I still think this is probably a high estimate. Um, but so then we use these. As you can see here, there is 66 points for Auton, 190 points for Teleop, and 60 points for Endgame. So then over here, this is where I determine the weights for the other sheets. So basically, uh, number of points for that category over total points for percent, right? And then multiply that by 5.03. 
just to get a cool multiplier number. So these are the multipliers. So every Aton function will basically be multiplied by 105 to give it a score. Every teleop will be multiplied by 302 and end game by 96. And basically, you guys will come up with the functions and then we'll multiply the rank by these values and we can get a quantitative, this is the function that is the most important to score the most points. Okay, so here is our final list. As you can see, driving itself across the field is number one, unsurprisingly. Um, you can't really do a whole lot without driving, so it makes sense that that's up top. Second is intaking the sample, because you also can't do a whole lot without picking up the game piece. So if you can't score it, you can't hold it. So then we have place the sample in the high basket, which is good, because that's based off of the scoring that I did. It aligns with that, that the high basket is the way to go. Um, has the highest scoring payoff. Um, next, I mean, you guys can read. I don't need to read this for you. Um, so yeah, the, the thing I'm most surprised by is the climbing itself onto the second rung being that low, but I guess that's... Can you explain why you ranked it so low? It's more on the terms of doability. Okay, yeah, so that's... Mm-hmm. It's not saying that it's not worth our time. It's actually worth a lot of time, mm -hmm. but it's just not doable. Okay. Yeah. So, in the future, when we do this for FRC, for example, we're gonna not take that into account because we're gonna pretend like we have infinite capability and can do everything. Okay. All right. So in the future, we're gonna rank everything based off of purely which is the most points, and then we'll figure out the rest from there. But yeah. So I think this is a very good list. Uh, aligns pretty closely with what I was thinking and hopefully with what you guys were thinking. Yep, that's all. Thanks.